Good morning, students. <clears throat> Today we are going to do our first chapter of moments, the lost child. It has been written by Mulkaraj Anand. Uh, let me tell you something about uh, first of all uh, the author of the uh, chapter. Mulkaraj Anand was an Indian writer in English. He was born on second uh, December, uh, sorry, twelfth December, nineteen zero five. Uh, his works uh, generally depict the lives of uh, poor people in India, the Indian traditional society. Uh, he mainly became famous uh, for his novels like Unti Untouchable, which was published in 1935, and then Kuli uh, the next year in 1936. Uh, he was conferred with uh, many awards. Uh, he was awarded uh, the International Peace Prize in 1953. Then in 1968, he uh, was awarded with Padma Bhushan uh, by Indian government. And in 1971, uh, again, he was awarded with uh, Sahitya Academy Award. So uh, he generally writes about the uh, poor people of India. The uh, This very story, The Lost Child, is actually the analysis of, uh, of child's uh, psychology and his bond with his parents so we can say that the theme of the story is actually the bond of love and affection that a child shares with his parents so let's read it today very quickly a child goes to a fair with his parents he is happy and excited and wants to wants the sweets and toys displayed there but his parents don't buy them for him when then uh, does he refuse when someone why then does he refuse when someone else offers them to him? So it's a story of a child who was lost in a fair. He had gone there with his parents and there he was separated from them uh, because it was such a crowded place and uh, he, he just lost his parents. And then what happens with the child? Uh, did he uh, you know, uh, just reunited, reunite with his parents or not? What happens? What was his um, mental condition? Uh, this is what we are going to read in this uh, chapter. So let's begin. This is uh, paragraph number one. You can see on the screens. If you don't have uh, uh, books, no problem, no worries. You can see uh, read it here uh, from the screen. Uh, and if you have books, uh, then please uh, just pause the video for a while and bring your books and pen pencil so that you can note down the uh, important points of the chapter. So let's begin. It was the festival of spring from the wintry shades of narrow lanes and alleys emerged a gaily clad humanity. Some walked, some rode on horses, others sat being carried in bamboo and bullock carts. So it was the festival of spring, the spring season. It has been talked about uh, the spring season from the wintry shades of means winter season has gone. Uh, wintry shades of narrow lanes and alleys emerged means because of winter season people generally do not come out of the houses but, but now the winter is over the spring season uh, has come so people have come out of their houses happily merrily cheerfully alleys means the passages or the lanes or the streets means uh, they have come out of their streets and they all are happy cheerful uh, and they all are you uh, know wearing uh, colorful clothes some walked some rode on horses some walkmen some people are uh, walking on on foot and some some rode on horse, horses others set being carried in bamboo and bullock carts I means some some are coming out uh, on on uh, feet some are on horses some some are in the bamboo and bullock carts one little uh, boy ran between his father's legs, brimming over with life and laughter. Brimming, brimming over means overflowing with life and laughter. A little boy uh, just uh, was, uh, you know, uh, running between his father's legs and he was uh, full of happiness, life and laughter. He was very, very happy that uh, he was going to attend the Fair means everyone in the village actually they, they want to um, go to fair. That's why they uh, some many of the people have come out of their houses. They all were heading towards the fair. Uh, next page. Come child come called his parents as he lagged behind fascinated by the toys in the shops that lined the way. Come child come called his parents. The, the 
the child was fascinated charmed by attracted by the toys in the shops that lined the way means those were put in a line uh, in front uh, in front of the uh, you know shops to attract the uh, uh, customers so the child was quite charmed uh, fascinated by those old uh, toys and he just kept standing for a while there and then his parents had to call him come child come come fast don't uh, lay behind don't lag behind he hurried towards his parents his feet obedient to their call he hurried hurried towards his parents means he quickly just uh, moved forward to move to his parents his feet obedient to their call means as soon as he uh, you know uh, just uh, he hears uh, the call from his parents he he obediently follow them and he uh, no more will remain uh, standing there uh, near the to- toy shops uh his eyes still lingering on the receding toys although he kept on looking at the toys which were you no know, going back and back far and far away from him because he was moving forward and forward as he came to where they had stopped to wait for him he could not suppress the desire uh, of his heart even though he well knew the old cold stare of refusal in their eyes means means as he came to where they had stopped to wait for him he could not suppress the desire means when the child reached to his parents where they were waiting for him to uh, come and join them he could not suppress the desire he could not you know uh, uh, press the desire of his heart uh even though he well knew the old means he just uh, just uh, you can say uh, just uh, expressed his desire to buy the toy even though he well knew the old cold stare of refusal refusal means means they would definitely say no to buy the toys even though he knew that but still he expressed his desire to buy that i want that toy he pleaded he pleaded means he made an a uh, appealing you know emotional appeal he he uh, said it uh, like in a begging style i want that toy means i want that toy i want to buy that toy his father looked at him red eyed red eyed here stands for the anger red red eyed in anger his father looked at him in anger in his familiar tyrant's way tyrant in cruel way his mother melted by the free spirit of the day was tender and giving him her finger to hold sad look child what is before you but the mother was quite uh, you know you can say uh, uh, soft and she was melted by the free spirit of the day means see the uh, you can say the sp- phrase melted by the free spirit of the day because this the day was tender and uh, you know quite it was uh, Uh, a soft day soft day means uh, to say the uh, weather was very very uh, you know you can say uh, the weather was pleasant so uh, melted by the sp- uh, free spirit of the day means she ha- had got emotional because of the of the good weather and she just didn't want to uh, get angry uh, on her child so she just gave him uh, her finger to hold and said and to and persuade the child uh, not to look at the toy and look child what is before you and he she showed him some other things just to make him uh, you know uh, attracted towards something else and forget about the toy it was a uh, overflowing mustard field pale like melting gold as it swept across miles and miles on of even land means it was she wanted to show the child the mustard field which was which was uh, full of yellow flowers like melting gold and it swept across miles and miles of e- even land means it was uh, spread uh, up to far far away land as much as one can see at a time next is a group of dragon flies were bustling about on their gaudy purple wings intercepting the flies of a lone black bee or butterfly in search of sweetness from the flowers a group of dragon flies uh, were bustling about bustling about on the gaudy purple gaudy means bright and showy very colorful purple wings intercepting the flight means they were intercepting the flight of a um, lone lone means lonely alone one black bee or butterfly in search of sweetness from the flowers means the dragon flies were intercepting the flight of bee or butterflies they were actually hindering the ways of the a black bee or butterflies uh, towards the
flowers from where the bee or butterfly wanted to have some nectar. Uh, the child followed them in the air with his gaze. The child followed them. Them. Who, who are them here? Them here stand for the dragonflies. Them here stands for the dragonflies. So the child followed them in their in the air with his gaze. Gaze means look. Till one of them would still its wings and rest, and uh, he would try to catch it. Till one of them would still its wings. Still its wings means would stop fluttering, would stop flying and rest and would sit down and would try to and he would try to catch it. And he was just waiting one of the dragonflies to uh, when, when it will uh, take a rest and would stop fluttering its, uh, you know, you know, uh, st stop fluttering, flapping its wings and he would uh, catch them, then, uh, catch it then. But it would go fluttering, but it would go, but the dragonfly did not stop flying, it would go fluttering, flapping up into the air where he had almost caught it in his hands. Then his mother gave a cautionary call, means he was just, his parents have already gone ahead and he was just trying to catch the uh, you know, dragonflies in his hands. But uh, when he he was just uh, about to catch uh, one of the uh, dragonflies, his mother again called him, giving him a warning call. Come child, come on to the footpath. Come join us on to the footpath. He ran towards his parents. He ran towards his parents gaily, gaily means happily and walked abreast of them side by side of them for a while being however soon left behind. However, soon after that he was left behind attracted by the little insects and worms along the footpath that were teeming out from their hiding places to enjoy the sunshine. Although for a while he just uh, kept on walking abreast means side by side of her, of his parents but soon uh, left behind. But again the child because the child is a child and he, he gets attracted uh, to very you know, normal things, to very little things uh, around him. So he was again attracted by the little insects and worms along the footpath on which they were walking on the footpath. There were, he could see many insects and worms. Uh, which were uh, teeming out. Teeming out means they had come out of their holes from their hiding places and they had grouped there. They had made a group on the uh, on the footpath. So he just was attracted towards those little insects and worms and he uh, and the worms and the insects were enjoying the sunshine. So he just stood there for a while and uh, you know, wanted to just enjoy their activities, the activities of insects on the footpath. Uh, so the, he was left behind and his parents moved forward come child come his parents called from the shade of a groove uh, where they had seated themselves on the edge of a well he ran towards them come child come again his parents called him uh, from the shade of a groove groove means a small group of trees they, they were sitting under the small group of trees where they had seated themselves on the edge of a well they were sitting on the edge of the well ring uh, edge of the well he ran towards them he again he who's he here he here is the child he again ran towards his parents a shower of young flowers fell upon the child as he entered the groove as he entered the that small group of forest under the, he went under that a small uh, no so sorry a shower of young flowers fell upon the child a shower of means the young flowers of the trees fell upon the child they fell down the on the uh, upon the child and forgetting his parents he began to gather the raining petals in his hands so again he forgot that his parents had called him he just started to gather the raining petals in his hand raining the petals were raining from the from the trees uh, under which he had just entered but lo he heard the cooing of doves and ran towards his parents shouting the dove the dove the raining petals dropped from his forgotten hands and again he heard something uh, more was there to attract the little child he heard the cooing of doves the doves had started cooing and he ran towards his parents shouting the dove the dove means he was so excited that he shouted out the dove the dove means he wanted his parents to see 
to watch out the dove for a while. The raining petals dropped from his forgotten hands. Now he had already forgotten the raining petals which he had just gathered from the uh, from the crew. Uh, come child come, they called to the boy, to the child who had now gone running in wild capers round and bend and tree and gathering him up they took the narrow winding footpath, footpath which led to the fair through the mustard fields. Come child come, again the parents asked him to come faster so that he could join them and could walk abreast of them, means side by side uh, to them. They called the child who had now gone running in wild capers, who had now gone, means where the child had gone, they, he had gone uh, in wild capers, means jumping and dancing, he had entered into the small, you can say wood small forest, uh, around, around the banyan tree and gathering him up. They took the narrow winding path uh, which led to the fair through the mustard field. Now they uh, gathered him up. Uh, the parents took the boy and took the narrow winding winding means bending, twisting footpath which led to the fair through the mustard fields. Now finally they have just, uh, they, they are just about to enter the, the uh, fair. Up to here, they were just walking in the lanes, walk, walking towards the forest, uh, walking towards the fair. But now they have just about to uh, enter the fair at the you know where the setup was uh, made for the fair. As they neared, come on to the next page. As they neared the village, the child could see many other footpaths full of throngs converging to the whirlpool of the fair and left at once uh, rappled uh, and fascinated by the confusion of the world he was entering. As they neared the village, the child could see many other footpaths full of throngs. Many other footpaths full of throngs means all the footpaths coming from different directions of the village, they were all crowded. They were all crowded. Got it everyone? Uh, and converging to the whirlpool of the fair and they all were meeting converging to the whirlpool of fair means they all footpath all the people coming from different directions of the village they all were going to a particular destination and what was the destination the destination was the fair means they all had to gather to the the place where the fair uh, set up uh, fair was set up fair was uh, you know uh, set up yes and felt at once <laughs> repelled repelled and fascinated by the confusion of the world he was entering repelled means he he just was draw back for a for a while he just uh, no was taken aback he was surprised and fascinated by the confusion of the world he was entering means the child might not have seen such a big crowd earlier in her in his life so he was uh, for a while he was uh, drove back he was taken aback he was fascinated he was charmed by the confusion of the world he was entering means it was quite a new world for the child at sweet meats uh, a sweet uh, meat seller hogged gulab jamun rasgulla burfi jalebi at the corner of the entrance and a crowd pressed around his counter at the foot of an architecture of many colored sweets decorated with leaves of silver and gold the child stared open eyed and his mouth watered for the burfi that burfi that he, that was his favorite sweet i want that burfi he slowly murmured murmured means he just uh, very slowly in a very slow tone he whispered to his parents that he wanted that burfi but he half knew as he begged that this plea would not be he did means not he did not be he did means not be paid any attention means his parents would not pay any attention to his plea to his request plea means request uh, because his parents would say he was greedy so without waiting for an answer he moved on so as soon as he entered in the fair the first thing that he came across was a sweet meat shop 
where he could uh, see the gulab jamuns, rasgullas, barfi and jalebi at the corner of the entrance and, and, and a crowd pressed round his co uh, counter at the foot of an architecture of many colors, sweets, decorated means and he could see a large crowd you know, thronged around the shop who wanted to buy the, the uh, sweets from there. At the foot of an architecture of many colors, at the foot of architecture means they had, you know, set up the suites in such a way that it seemed as if they have particularly, you know, uh, architecture, uh, a pattern of uh, putting or decorating or displaying the the suites in the shop. So, uh, and the suites were decorated with leaves of silver and gold, uh, you know, you can say leaves of silver and gold. The child stared, stared means just gazed for a while, open eyed and his mouth watered for the burfi that he, that was his favorite. Means he, the child just uh, kept on looking, stared means kept on looking, open eyed and his mouth watered and his mouth was watering for the burfi. That was his favorite, he wanted to have that favorite burfi he, he saw there on the shop uh, but he and he slowly whispered I want that burfi but he knew but he half knew he, he knew that that his request would not be paid any attention that his parents would not buy any burfi for him because his parents would say he was greedy and what reason would his parents give for that his parents would say that he was greedy he should not be greedy looking at the uh, you know uh, sweets uh, whenever he uh, looks at the sweets he be he becomes greedy he wants to have all them but it should not be uh, so he should not be greedy so without waiting for an answer he moved on and he knew that he would not be uh, uh, the parents would not buy any sweets for him so he just kept on moving the next thing that he came across in the fair was a flower seller hog, a garland of gulmohar means a garland of gulmohar, a garland of gulmohar. The child seemed irresistibly drawn. He was tempted to go there. At once he was tempted to go there. He went towards uh, the basket where the flowers lay heaped and half murmured. He just went towards, he just went there towards the basket where the flowers lay heaped means in a heap, heaped in a heap. Uh, and half murmured and he whispered again I want that garland see this child's cycle psychology I mean a child whatever he sees something new and attractive he wants to have all the things first he wanted to have the sweets now he want, wanted to have the garland but he well knew his parents would refuse means would say no he knew it very well that again his parents would not buy the garland to him uh, refused to buy him those flowers because they would say that they were cheap means they would say that the flowers were very cheap and they would uh, get spoiled very soon so they would uh, wither very soon they would dry up very soon so you should not buy the garland so without waiting for an answer he moved on he who was he again the child moved on he knew that his parents would say that the flowers would wither very soon so we should not buy them we should not sp uh, spoil the money waste the money on buying those flowers next is a man stood holding a pole with yellow red green purple balloons what was the next thing he wanted to have of course he came across the balloon seller next I uh, was uh, having the balloons I was having yellow, red, green, purple and uh, different kinds of balloons uh, flying from it, uh, fly, flying from it, it means it here the pole, it means all the flowers were tied uh, with a pole and they were uh, different colored uh, balloons the child was simply carried away carried away means fascinated by the rainbow glory of the silken colors it means silken colors stand for the different colors yellow red green purple etc and he was filled with an overwhelming great desire to purchase them all he wanted to have them all he wanted to buy all the uh, balloons uh, but he well knew his parents would never buy him the balloons because they would say he was too old to play with such toys so he walked on farther he again wanted to have those uh, balloons but he knew he knew that his parents would say that you are very uh, you are now quite a big boy you are an old boy uh, you are not a tiny tote you are not a, a small child so you should not play with the balloons so he knew that the, the, his parents would never buy 
the balloons for him so he walked on farther means he just moved on from there that's all for uh, now in our next class we will read from here up to the uh, rest of the chapter up to the last page i hope you all have understood uh, and uh, would have noted down all the meanings you you found uh, difficult there and uh, so uh, that's all for now